Oh, hey. Um, you know, I love going on walks. Yeah, I love, I love uh, going on walks, whether it's in town or out at Geode or, or wherever. Um, I, I like it. Um, not for the sake of like getting from here to or there. It's different from like a run or a race or anything like that. Uh, because it's a time uh, where I can just kind of take my time and look around and appreciate uh, nature. You know, maybe, maybe I'll see an eagle up in the tree. Maybe I'll see a deer off in the field over there. You know, I don't know. There, there's just something about it uh, that's just interesting. Well, today, this whole week, uh, or month, we've been talking about um, the first book in the Bible. You guys remember what it is? It's Genesis. Um, Genesis, you know, we started this off by talking about a guy by the name of Abraham. You know, way back a couple weeks ago, we talked about Abraham and, and how God had made this promise to Abraham that he was going to make his descendants, you know, his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, all that, you know, he was going to make them number more than the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. It's an outrageous kind of a promise. That's how big God is. And from there, we talked about, you know, we talked about Jacob. And we talked about how he tricked his brother Esau and his father Isaac. And we talked about that. And we talked about how Jacob, you know, trusted God because God showed himself to Jacob, uh, you know, uh, when Jacob had laid down and tried to go to sleep. And he had dreamed this dream uh, about angels going up and down. And God told him about it, about this promise and kind of reaffirmed this promise that he had made to Abraham to Jacob. We moved from there on to, you know, last week we, we, we talked about Jacob and how he had a whole bunch of sons and... One of them was named Joseph. And Joseph, you know, we learned that out of all of the boys, Joseph was Jacob's favorite. And he made this really, really clear uh, because he had given him this, this beautiful coat that none of his brother brothers got. And Joseph, we saw that he was special because God had given him these dreams, right? Um, but between being... Jacob's favorite in having these dreams, Joseph kind of came off as annoying uh, to his brothers, and his brothers were pretty jealous. And so we learned that uh, last week that Joseph, you know, he went out to see his brothers one time when they were tending sheep, and his brothers, they threw him into this empty well. And then uh, they took his coat, and they put some blood on it, and they let Jacob believe that Joseph had died. But they really sold Joseph off to some traders who were going to Egypt. And we left off last week by, by looking especially at Genesis 39, verse 2. At the very start of it, it goes like this. But the Lord was with Joseph. Today, we're kind of picking up where we left off. See, that's a really, really important thought. The Lord was with Joseph. That's a huge, huge, huge deal. Okay? But... That's not where the story ends. It's kind of interesting. Uh, because Potiphar, or this, this guy um, in Egypt named Potiphar buys Joseph. Okay? Weird whole dynamic there. Okay? But he buys Joseph. And Joseph, you know, he does all of these tasks for Potiphar. And Potiphar sees uh, that God is with him. He can see this. Okay, because everything that Joseph does just turns out really well. Joseph is super talented, and he is able to do a whole lot of things really well. But Potiphar is not the only one who notices Joseph. Potiphar's wife also takes an interest in Joseph. And she tries to get Joseph to do something really, really bad. And Joseph, he says no. No way, Jose, uh, because if I were to do what you were wanting me to do, that would be really bad to Potiphar. That would really be really bad to my God, and I'm not going to do it. Well, Potiphar's wife doesn't really stop, and finally she gets to a point where she, she lies about Joseph, and she uh, lies about Joseph to Potiphar, and Potiphar gets so angry with Joseph that he throws him in prison. And you think, man, but when are things going to finally turn up good for Joseph? 
Well, here's the thing about Joseph. He doesn't really, at least as far as we can tell, I mean, it had to affect him in some ways, had to make him sad, but it doesn't keep him from doing a good job. Because here's, here's how uh, the writer of Genesis puts it when he's talking about it. And this is really kind of cool. This stuck out to me as I was reading through this. This is Genesis 39, um, 20, kind of the last half of 20 and 21. Um, and Joseph's uh, master took him and put him into, uh, into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, were kept. And he was there. But the Lord was with Joseph. You see that again, right? But check this out. It's not where it ends. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him kindness and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Guys, here's the thing. When I walk around, you know, on a trail, you know, there are a couple things that just start are there. You know, uh, if I walk in the mornings, I'm going to get dew on my feet and my shoes are going to be wet. Okay, because water is wet. <laughs> All right. The other thing is that if I, you know, stub my toe on a rock, it's because the rock is hard. That's just what a rock is, right? Okay? There are some things that just make things the way they are. Here's the thing that we learn about God in this. God loves Joseph. He is kind to him. Uh, it's really interesting to see how God moves in all of this. Uh, really, really interesting to me. But God is kind to Joseph. This is part of who God is. Uh, kind of like how a rock is, is hard and, and um, water is wet. God is kind. He is loving. That's just who God is. That's who our God is. That's something that stuck out to me. But that's, not also, or that's also not where the story ends. See, Joseph, he's put in this prison, uh, the keeper of the prison, you know, he notices that Joseph is doing a good job, and he puts him in charge of all of this other stuff in the prison. It's really interesting. And so, eventually, one day, um, two new prisoners come in to the prison. Okay, one is the chief cupbearer for uh, Pharaoh. The other one is the chief bread maker for the Pharaoh, the chief baker. And the Pharaoh is kind of like the king of Egypt, in case you were wondering. And um, so uh, Joseph, you know, he's in charge of these new prisoners. You know, he makes sure that everything is okay for him. One day, um, one day, both the cupbearer and the baker have dreams. And they're kind of interested. They, they know that these dreams mean something, but they, they don't know anybody who will, who will interpret them for them, who will tell them what they mean. And so they're asking all of this. And Joseph, you know, he says... Um, he tells them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me. And so they tell, they tell Joseph their dreams. And after the cupbearer tells Joseph his dream, Joseph, he's like, he's like, I got this. This is what your dream means. Um, in three days, in three days, uh, you are going to be um, restored to your position. You're going to be lifted up out of here and restored to your position. And everything is going to be good for you. This is all going to be forgotten. You're going to have a wonderful career. You're going to have a wonderful life. When that happens, this is important. When that happens, don't forget about me. Please remember me. I was put in here unjustly. And I would love if, if I could be done with this place. The baker, he also tells Joseph his dream. But here's the problem. Joseph... After the baker tells him his dream, Joseph says, this is what your dream means. In three days, you are also going to be lifted up out of this place, but you're going to be put to death. And here's the thing. I, I, I wonder, you know, if in those three days, people were, Joseph was just like, man, I hope these things come true. <laughs> uh, I have faith that these things are going to come true. Um, but they do. The proof is in the pudding, and in three days, everything happens exactly as God has revealed to Joseph uh, that, that, that happened in the dreams. You know, the cupbearer, um, he is restored to his position. He's, he's back in his old job. The baker, though, he is put to death. And you would think that, you know, 
the cupbearer would remember kind of an important detail as Joseph interpreting the dream correctly. <laughs> he would think that he would remember that. But he doesn't. He doesn't. It's kind of frustrating. And you're kind of like, oh, when are things going to pick up for Joseph? Well, things will. That's kind of the cliffhanger that I'm going to leave you on. Because here's the thing that you need to remember about not only this portion of Genesis and this portion of Joseph's story, but the same thing is true today. See, when things don't make sense, remember that God is with you. Guys, that's kind of what today comes down to. And really about this whole thing, while we're stuck inside, while we're stuck you know, with our siblings and stuck with our parents and, and stuck at home and not going to school, not going to restaurants, not going to the park, not going to all of these things. Guys, here's what I want you to remember. When things don't make sense, remember that God is with you. Just like God was with Joseph, God is with you. Guys, I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to get back on my walk. I want to see all these things that God has made. So let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for these kids. What I ask that you would help them just to trust in you. And what I ask that you would help them to uh, trust you in the big things, like everything that's happened in our country, and in the little things, like uh, their arguments with their brothers or sisters or their parents, or, or, or being uh, scared at night when it's dark in their rooms. And I ask that you would be with them and help them, uh, help them to trust uh, that you are big enough to handle anything that comes along. Lord, we praise you. And we ask this all in your name. Amen. All right, guys. I'm going to get back to my walk. You guys have a fabulous day.